Our guest on Horrible Science this week is the deadliest enemy the germ world has ever had. Please welcome Louis Pasteur. <coughs> Louis Pasteur, it is an absolute pleasure to meet you. Have you washed your hands? Well, uh, not recently, no. Then no. <clears throat> OK, uh, so you were apparently absolutely obsessed with germs. Well, I would not say that. Obsessed is exaggerating a little bit. Yeah, but you were always trying to hunt them down, weren't you? We've actually got some footage of you here at the dinner table. <laughs> now, that is some pretty dedicated germ hunting right there. Did you do that all the time? <laughs> Of course, and I have made many interesting discoveries. Although our friends did stop coming around for dinner after a while. And you were the first to prove that... <coughs> oh, <coughs> disgusting. Sorry. Yeah, sorry, it's been all day. Yep. Where are you? My little beauties. Ah. There you are. Yep, yep. Can Is I have that? I need that. Awesome. That's part of the interview. Yep. As I was saying, you were the first to prove that diseases were caused by germs, weren't you? Indeed. Back then, scientists didn't believe that something so tiny could kill a human being. But through my experiments, I was able to show that many terrible diseases, such as uh, anthrax and Tebe, were the work of germs. But <laughs> I wouldn't say that I was obsessed. <coughs> oh, oh. <coughs> Would you mind just maybe wearing this? Is that okay? What? No, mate. It's no, a no, career. No, it is better for no, all no, of us. This is Thank what you. the, this is what the, this is what the fans want to see. They oh. want to... They want to... Okay. Merci. Right. Uh, but you also developed cures for diseases, didn't you? Like rabies and anthrax, saving thousands of Ooh. lives. What was that noise? Oh. It sounded like a tiny elephant trapped inside a tuba. Yeah, um, I've actually had a little bit of an upset stomach all day, and I was kind of hoping you could maybe give me some advice, because... <clears throat> I think you people are disgusting. No, do not touch me. No, leave me alone. I am going back to the 19th century and I'm going to take an odd bath. Uh, how do I get... To... Um, Louis Pasteur, thanks very much. Oh, no, no yeah. dirty boys make me feel sick. Today's big interview is with eminent Italian scientist Rita Levi Monta... Look, can I just call you Rita? <laughs> of course. Do not so, muck this up, pretty Mark. impressive hair there, Reitz. Oh, thank you. I keep bats in it. <laughs> really? <laughs> no. I am famed for my sense of humour. <laughs> really? <laughs> no, I am famed for my Nobel Prize. Oh, yeah, Nobel Prize. Yeah, yeah. So, Nobles, they're like Oscars, aren't they? Mm -hmm. Instead of getting them for movies, you get them for... sciencing. What did you get yours for, Reitz? My work in isolating something called nerve growth factor, a protein that affects how fast cells grow. During World War II, I set up a secret science lab uh, using needles and tweezers from around my home. If I'd have been discovered, I would have been imprisoned. Ah, uh, epic, epic. As a fellow scientific genius, can I have a go? Of course! Uh, my experiments involve uh, mouse tumours and snake venom. Oh, oh right, right, um, get that. Continue. Luckily, I could do most of my experiments on eggs. Nobody suspected me, especially as I could eat the experiments afterwards. <laughs> you know what, Reitz? We're like genius peas in a pod. Not. When I first met you, I thought you were like this like, really sweet old lady. Now I've realised you're just weird. Even for a programme called Horrible Science. What are you going to do next? Punch a penguin? Hmm. Is your vernicas being stimulated again? Hmm? No. Hmm. Then I theorise you are no scientist and nothing but a blithering idiot. Think again, creepy Rita, the raw egg eater. <laughs> if you care to inspect my nethers. Rita, Rita, I'm so sorry. Mark's having a bit of an off day. Please bear with him. Uh, no, I'm not. Zip it, Rita. I, I don't... No, sorry. I don't mean you. Um, please accept my sincerest apologies. We here at Horrible Science have nothing but the utmost respect for you. I don't! <laughs> oh, please. Uh, I survived the fascists during the war. It'll take more than an idiot in some novelty knickers to annoy me. Uh. <laughs> 
Now, would you like to hear about my founding the European Brain Research Institute? Nah. Mm. I have had enough. Rita, please, oh. just bear with me. Oh! oh. <gasps> my mice! Uh. You keep mice in your bag? Seriously, who are you, lady? Well, Rita famously took mice with her to Rio so she could conduct experiments on them. They're valuable, Mark. Well, they were? Never have I ever seen such unscientific conduct. Idiotty! Hello! Hello and welcome to McTaggart Tonight with me, Professor McTaggart. And have we got a guest for you, a man who has saved over 500 million lives. Ladies and gentlemen, he invented the vaccine. He died in Gloucestershire in 1823. It's only Mr. Edward Jenner! Where is he? Hmm? He was supposed to be here. I don't know where he is. Oh, for the love of Fleming. Lucy, I'm dying here! Right news! I found my weather balloon! What are you doing? Chasing balloons. Everyone loves a balloon chase. No, no, they don't. Behave yourself. Puss? No, thank you. Your loss? Ah, right. Puss balloons! <laughs> what a hilarious anecdote. But uh, seriously, why don't you tell us how you invented the first vaccine? Ah, well, I got the idea from a cow. A cow? Yeah, you see, I was a country doctor, and a dairy maid told me she never worried about catching smallpox because she'd had cowpox, and no one had ever died of cowpox, not even cows. I see. So you thought, let's give everyone cowpox. Huh? Exactly. But first, I had to test my theory. Ah, clinical research. It's absolutely imperative to test every theory with rigorous scientific precision. Exactly. So I found a small boy. A small boy? Yeah, you don't want a big one. They fight back. I cut his arm and I rubbed in a load of cowpox pus. Good grief. Was he OK? No, of course not. He caught cowpox. But would you believe it? He made a complete recovery. Thank goodness. So then I gave him smallpox to see what would happen. You mean you didn't know he'd be immune? No. That's why I was testing it. Anyway, funny thing, he didn't die or anything. Not one bit. And so you began your vaccination programme. No, 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 no. Hang on. You can't go round giving everyone cowpox just because one small boy didn't die. Could have been a fluke. So I got my 18-month-old baby, did the whole thing on him as well. Oh, my good Lord. And guess what? The milkmaid was right. Cowpox does protect you from smallpox. Who knew? Well, not you, obviously. If you'd been wrong, those children could have died. Yeah, or been horribly disfigured. The last thing you want is some madman rubbing smallpox pus into you. You know, that would be awful. Anyway, I became famous, saved lots of lives, crashed balloons everywhere, and had the horns of the cow silver-plated to celebrate. And the boy? No, they wouldn't let me silver-plate the boy. I don't know why. Go on, have some pus. Come no, on. No, no, no. Why don't I, I rub some into you, see what happens? No, hey. no, 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 no. Come on, there. Get, get away from me. Get him off! Ah. Robot! Oi! Help! Come back here! Uh, I've got pus in my crenellations. Oh, I don't want to do interviews anymore. It's my great pleasure to introduce a man who knows almost as much about blood as me. I think I probably know a great deal more about the blood than you, Mark. It's Charles Drew. It's so horrible. Nah. <laughs> OK, thanks, Charles. Oh, thank you, Mark. Did I tell you that I helped to develop the blood bank? I also discovered that while people have different blood groups, everybody has the same kind of plasma. Another little discovery that helped save countless lives. <laughs> OK. Now, Chaz, uh, you and me both know loads about blood, so I thought it'd be great if you and me could do a blood transfusion together. No, I, I don't think that's wise, Mark. I uh, don't think you know enough about so the blood. So this woman needs a blood transfusion. And this is our donor. What is this? Don't know everything, do you, Charlie? This is a dog. You, you can't give a human dog's blood. It's totally different to human blood. Yeah, we have to get it from a human. cat. Human, human, human. Yeah, totally, yeah, I knew that. Um, Glenda? OK, this is Glenda. She's a human. She's going to be giving us some blood today. What are you doing? Giving a patient human blood, mate. Try and keep up. No, you can't just give her anyone's blood. It has to be a match, the same blood group. What now? 
Everybody has slight differences in what makes up their blood. In fact, there are many different types of blood group. You can't just give this woman Glenda's blood unless she's in the same blood group as the patient. Thanks, Glenda. Wow, there's a lot to remember, isn't there? <laughs> I'm starting to think you know absolutely nothing about blood. Well, that's where you're wrong, mate, because I know loads about blood. You thought plasma was a type of TV set. Yeah, mate, I probably even know more than you about bloods, but you're the guest on the show, and I didn't want to embarrass you in front of everyone at home watching it on the TV, which for many people will be a plasma. Unbelievable. Unbelievable. Charles to everyone. <laughs> Thanks for joining us, Mr Bell. Have you come far? Uh, from 1887. Not that far, then. So, Mr Bell, why don't you tell us a little bit about an invention of yours that changed the world? <laughs> Which one? <laughs> uh, telephone dude, obviously. Fine. You know, I invented the metal detector as well. Why does nobody ever want to talk about that? Huh? Great. Why don't you tell us a little bit more about how the telephone works? Well, you speak into this cone-shaped mouthpiece, and this electromagnet here turns the vibrations caused by your voice into electric pulses. Ah, so it works a little bit like the bones inside your ears? Um. Yes, I suppose it does. Nice one, Mark. We'll make a scientist of you yet. Ding, ding. I mean, please carry on. Right. And then the pulses travel along the wire to the other end where they meet another electromagnet and whereupon they are converted back into vibrations and amplified by another cone. And then we can hear it. That's amazing. Can you tell us a little bit more about the first phone call you ever made? Uh, no, no. I mean, I, mean, I, I, don't, I don't really remember it, to be honest. <laughs> Really? Apparently you phoned your assistant and you said, Mr. Watson, come here, I want you. Why did you say that? I, I, it, was, it was a long time ago. I, I don't, um, <clears throat> don't remember. Uh, now, metal detectors are extremely interesting. I've got a very funny story. Yeah, I think we've actually got some film footage of your very first phone call here. No, no, you, you don't need to show that. That's... Apparently the transmitter of your original phone had to be filled with acid in order to work. One day you spilt some on your trousers, then you shouted for help and your assistant heard you through the telephone. So the first phone call was actually made by accident. Uh, maybe. Okay. Metal detectors, like I what say. What did he say next? Help, help, this acid is dissolving my trousers. Right, that's it. I hate telephones. Even after I invented them, I would never have one near me. They're too much of a distraction. I can't stand the noise. Metal detectors. Now, those are nice and quiet, let me tell you. I've just got one more question, Mr Bell. Mr Bell! Mr Bell! Hi! Hi! Hello! Hi, Mr Bell. Since you painted the first working electric loudspeaker, I thought you might like to hear what speakers sound like here in the 21st century. Bob, please do not do what I think you're about to do. Don't worry, <gasps> Mark. No! No! Thanks Bob, to you, no! Mr Bell, we're able to do cool stuff like this. <laughs> The 21st century is so noisy! I'm getting out of here! Just Bob, stop it! You're not freaking right things up for your personal age, John! Got it. Well, that's about it. All the science this week! <laughs> <laughs>